video walk on 2014 Solaire. So, first up, you got folding grill mount. Pull the pull this pin out. Oop. There we go. Sorry, sorry. Pull the pin out from there. Fold this out. Fold it out like that. Then you have a propane connect right underneath there. Push that back in. Don't drop your pin like I did. Get back in there. Repin it. We have a ladder, so there's a walkable roof, and I recommend going up there every once in a while and just checking out your sealant and your roof material itself. Come on inside. 30 amp short cord, it's your short cord. This will come, this will be the one that comes with it when you come pick it up. You have cable inlet right here. So if the park provides cable, you can hook it to there. Or satellite, if you have your own portable satellite, you can hook it up to that one. A little outdoor light too. A little exterior shower. One of your keys will, the 751 key will open it up. You'll have hot and cold. Right below that, your dump area. You got your black and your gray. Um, and then you hook your hose up to there. And then you pull your valves to dump them. Um, I always recommend dumping your black tank first, then your gray. Um, your black tank is your toilet water, um, your gray is everything else. Yeah, that Your gray water will flush out your hose, um, so you don't have a stinky hose. You can um, store your hose in here. It even says sewer hose. Pop these caps off. You can store your sewer hose in the back bumper. Black tank flush. So as you are dumping your black tank, you can hook a hose up to here, and it'll flush out your black tank. Moving right along. Exhaust for your furnace. So keep it clean in there. Um, clean on any debris you see it. You see if there's any in there. Excuse me. <clears throat> they make screens for them. They don't recommend you run them with the screen on. But as far as like storage, it's going to keep um, things from building debris inside of it, building up nests, uh, sawdust, not even sawdust, but dust. That'll help mitigate some of that. So just keep it clean in there. If you're fresh water, fill your onboard tank from there. And then you need your pump to pull from that. If you have your hose hooked up to city, you don't need your pump. It just operates off of city pressure. If you did fill your fresh tank up and you only used half of it, and you know it's going to be a couple of weeks between your next trip. Right, dump, definitely drain your tank and you drain it from that right there. There'll be a cap for it. Battery up here. So you, uh, um, in the winter, I recommend taking your battery completely out, storing it somewhere dry and warm. Um, if it's going to be a long time between trips, I recommend disconnecting the negative lead. That's just your white one right there. Propane tanks. Dual 30 pound cylinders. That's your regulator over there. You can see the little black tab right back there. See it's pointing this way. It's gonna pull from this tank first. Once this one's depleted, it'll automatically switch to pulling from that one. Super simple. You can even take this whole cover off if you need it to. Sometimes it makes it easier to get to it. Manual crank. You can upgrade to a tongue jack if you want to. Power tongue jack. That's something we could install if you wanted. And then you have previous hitch work from the customers, previous owners. It, it looks like you may not have some of the, all, all, some of the components and we will check. Here are your chains and then you break away for that box right here. So if you were to come on hitch for some reason, that'll pull that pin out of the box. Activate the brakes on your trailer. Get your crank handle right there. So your stabilizer jacks in all four corners. They don't um, don't try to lift up your camper with that. Uh, just lower them to snug it down. Get the shake out of it. If you want your camper to be level, use your tongue jack front and back. And then as you're backing in, backing out some blocks into the tires helps. Moving along, that's your hold open for your door right there. 
And this out, and there's a cable outlet over here. Those two on the other side were inlets. So this is an outlet. If you wanted to have a TV on a table outside, then you can, then you can plug it in through here. It's a GFCI protected outlet. All your GFCI protected outlets are on the same circuit, so if one were to trip, they're all going to trip. Water heater, very simple. You just put your anode rod in here. It's an inch and a sixteenth of socket size. I get it tight as much as I can by hand and then tighten it with a ratchet and a little extension. And then you're good to go. Before I pull it out, um, to drain your water heater, I definitely recommend draining it after every trip because, you know, again, you don't want this water to sit in the tank. It'll get stagnant. Um, pull your pressure relief. It'll lock open like that. Water will come out of here. That's fine. Everything's designed to get a little bit wet. Once it stops coming out, you can snap it close. Then you can take your drain plug out. If you neglect to do that, you're going to get a, a bath. Especially, and if, especially if you've been running it, you're going to get a hot bath. And then there's a little switch right back there. See if we can't focus. Yeah, right there. That's your switch that's running on electric. Other than that, I recommend cleaning there if you see any debris or cleaning in your burn area. Very simple. All your controls, besides your electric, all your other controls for it are on the inside. Vent for your fridge. Um, keep it clean. Clean up in here. All of them. You can even pop this cover off and clean in there too. This is just a hose to drain any condensation out. You got your vent for your range. So your range vent, if you're going to have your fan on, make sure that these tabs are open. That way this flap can move to displace the, uh, the air it's venting out. If not, if you have it locked closed, it's not really venting anything out. It's just running the fan in there. All right, moving along over here, you have an outdoor kitchen. And it's going to be a little difficult to lock it open with one hand. Let's see if I can't do it. So that just locks into there. Fold out cooktop. Like that. Then another GFCI protected outlet back there, as well as a light switch. Here, turn on and off these little LEDs there. Sink. Drains into your gray tank, and then you have a fridge. That fridge is only going to work when you're plugged in. Unlike your other fridge inside, which won't offer propane. And then you do have this extension. So you can hook it up. To your propane line right there and then to your outdoor grill because it's quite a way so you'd use this extension that pretty much concludes our exterior tour we'll move on on to the inside so right to your left all your controls so you got your slide out Right here. Whoop. So let's open that slide out. And while that's opening, you have your lights here. You have a porch light and then a scare light or like little lights on the outside. That right there is a cover for the RV cover for your camper. Boom. Controls for your water pump if you're going to turn your water pump on and off you do it from there. Water heater you do it from you can turn it on there. If you turn it on from here it's just going to be the propane you have to turn it on from there for electric. Then you can read battery how full your fresh is. Your, your tanks right there. Black gray all that. Let's see if we can zoom in. Focus. Focus. Right there. Um, you do not have two, three gray tanks. You have a black and a gray. And then controls for your awning. Go ahead and extend. It's a little cold out, so the awning's a little stiff. There we go.
So the awning was previously adjusted, that's why it's coming out crooked. Ideally, you want them to come in, uh, you want them to be adjusted to the same. You can't adjust it, difficult to do one-handed. You pinch this little metal D10 in, then you can slide it. You can raise or lower each end, like how oh, this end is lower than the other. Um, so you can pitch off water to one end if it's raining real bad. Um, yeah. Like that. This comes out more, I didn't know if we had more room, but you can go a couple more rotations and you see the bare tube and the flap. And then you're all the way open. Um, if, it's, if you have it pitched because it's raining and you want some water to come off to one end, just watch how much it's raining. If it starts getting real windy, real rainy, roll your awning in. You don't want the wind to take it away. Um, if you roll it in wet, as soon as you get the chance, I recommend rolling it back out, letting the sun dry it out. Run in the bedroom. Your light for your bedroom is right there. Turn on your light. You got storage either side. GFCI outlet over there. Another one over there. Light switch above your bed. Previous owners opted for a memory foam mattress, so this one is real cushy, real comfortable. Window here, same as the other side. And that's pretty much it for your bedroom. You do have a, a vent there that handles easy. So if you just pull it down and pull it up. That opens and closes it very easy. Thermostat, it's just as easy. It'll ask your fan mode, Let's see, auto, higher, or low. Um, auto is going to regulate whatever temperature you have it set at. So if it's you have it set to 65, it hits 65, it'll um, it'll shut off and then cycle on and off to regulate that temperature. Next, it'll ask for your cool. That's going to be your C. That goes to 55, and then furnace goes all the way to 988. Nope, 90. So you can get it really, really cold in here or really, really hot in here if you wanted to. GFCI out of there, that's got a reset on it too. That's where you reset most, most of your GFIs. There might be one in the bathroom, we'll check. If not, this is your main GFCI. TV, nice thing about this is you can pull this pin out right here and you can rotate the TV. Now obviously you'd have to do it with your door open and you open it by undoing the snap and sliding it. Make sure you snap it before you travel. But you can slide that door all out of the way. Then you can rotate your TV to have it be in the bedroom. Got your remote for your TV here. Remote for your radio here. Radio is super simple. Change your brightness there. Clock here. Scan through your channels there. We got Bluetooth. Bluetooth, AM, FM, Auxiliary, DVD. Is it a DVD player? It's not an HD DVD player. It's it's, it's got the um, red, uh, the white, and the yellow. That's composite. And you have different zones. So zone C is not zone. Let's see if I can get. It. So zone A is inside. So if you have B, if you have A off, it'll just be outside. If you have C is outside, there you go. And then if you have C off, it turns the outside off and the inside. So zone B is not used. Then you have your presets here and all that. Very simple. And there's a lot of buttons, but you don't need to use all of them. Um, like you're not going to be fiddling with this. You're, not, you're really not going to be adjusting your bass and your audio settings unless you really want to. Then you have a power button there. And this remote will act as your remote for your DVD player. So to use it as DVD, you turn your TV to the AV channel. Sometimes it's labeled composite. Pop your DVD in there. Be good to go. If you want to watch antenna on your... When you watch antenna, TV through your antenna, you have to crank up your antenna. So you crank it all the way up. And you would pull this down. You can rotate it. I'm going to rotate unless it's all the way up. Um... You pull down, rotate, before you lower it, line these two triangles up again, and then lower it. There's a cradle on the roof that it needs to sit in. There's this big cover in the way, that's a cover for the RV. It's kind of heavy, it will be difficult to move one hand, but this couch should turn into a bed. You just lift it, pull off your back cushions, I believe. No, 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 I'm wrong. 
I am wrong. You lift up the bottom and it pivots into a couch. Or a bed, rather. Microwave um, only works when you're plugged in. This is that f light with the fan I was telling you about. If you're running that fan, make sure that flaps open. Folding cooktop cover. Then your burners, you just turn it to light. Turn the sparker. The gas is off, so it won't light. And then to light your oven, you turn it to pilot on. Push and hold pilot. You can see pilot on. As you're pushing and holding the pilot, you have to get in there and manually light your pilot. It's kind of hard to see because it's dark, but there's a pilot back there you have to manually light. Once the pilot is lit, then you turn it to whatever temperature you need it to be. Um, if you're going to cook it again in a few hours, turn it to pilot on, turning it off. Um, that shuts your burners off, but leaves the pilot on. Fridge, super simple. On or off, auto or gas. So if it's out like that, it's on gas. If it's in, it's on auto. Um, auto is going to default to 110, so if, the, if your camper's plugged in, that's what it's going to use. Um, if you were to lose power somehow, um, or someone would trip over the cord, um, it'll switch to running off of propane. Um, these do take about mm, 9 to 12 hours to get the operating temperature. So if you can, plug it in the night before and get it charged up. Get it not charged up, rather, but get it co cooled down. Got a propane gas alarm right there. Carbon monoxide propane gas alarm. And then your breaker box right here. There's all your fuses and your breakers. I recommend keeping some spare fuses on you, just in case. Right here, got a smoke alarm. Those uses your 9-volt batteries. Another GFCI outlet down there. Right down there. And you can tell the GFCI because they're labeled. Light switch for in here. Turns the lights on in the bedroom, but we can come in through here. <laughs> Bathroom. Light switch for the lights in the bathroom. Very simple in here. You have a toilet with a pedal. As long as you're pushing it down, it's going to keep flushing. Another GFCI outlet. So that one in that kitchen is your main GFCI. Shower. Just a shower. Just deep, deep, deep basin. And then you have, you know, hot and cold. Very simple to use. They even give you like a deep sunlight. Um, that also helps if you're taller. You can actually stand up in the shower. And then another one of these vents. This one actually has... A fan in it. This doesn't do bad as well. You just slightly lift it up to get these tabs out of those tabs. It's very difficult to do one-handed. Um, due to the, our current circumstances, we can't do in-person walkthroughs. And then you would fold the leg up. Tucks up underneath there. Your table will rest now on these little bumpers. And then you just take your back cushions, lay them on the table, and it creates a nice platform for you to sleep on. Coming in through here. Very simple in here. You have a spot for TV in here. So pout cable, um, outlet. So you could run it out here, set your TV up here, or put it wherever really. This is just this is just so, so very similar to your bed in there. The table looks a little bit differently. You just take the table up, pop them legs and the holders underneath there. Pop the tables on the holders. Put your cushions to the side right here. Then you have a nice little eating area in here or another bunk. You have a light there. If you're going to use it as an eating area, I recommend folding this up. This 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 bunk folds up, and then it locks right there. That way that gives you some headroom. Yeah, very simple. Light for here, light, each bunk has a light. Light, light, so every bunk has their light. And that's pretty much it for the interior of this. Um, yeah. And this is your light switch for the light back there. And that pretty much concludes the tour of your 2014 Solaire.